Mutations! Welcome to my own brothers. Why do you keep changing it? You did that on purpose. No, I didn't. I was thinking you were going to say something, though. I was going to sing along with you. Jason was moments ago transfixed by the internet. I was watching a movie trailer for a movie I'm so excited to see. maybe a little un... Un, I mean, in, I'm connected instantly. I, I'm not like you. I can just be in a major argument or a fist fight, and the next second be in an emotional, dramatic scene in a movie. I can right. flip that switch like nothing. I was watching a trailer to a movie, and now I'm going to fart in my room with my brother. It's not like I have to really get into any mental state. Yeah. You need to talk about the give litter. Give your full attention. We're going to talk about the lint you picked up off the ground. work that I put into Coordinating these microphones. Yes, yeah, so I've been in here for hey, an hour trying hey. to get this stuff set up. It's funny how hard it is to record two voices. It's super annoying. Well, welcome back to this. Oh, featuring my neutral t shirt. I don't know if these are even still for sale anywhere, but here they are. Oh, I've seen that the way Nathan sits, he sits like this. Because the Why can't too you short. put the microphone like I do? In the ceiling? No, I just put it up front of you a little bit. Fine, and I will. It nah, blocks my thing. face. Move the thing. Why'd you bring it down? Oh, whatever. This couch is really uncomfortable. I the mean, only way to sit comfortably in this couch is to like oh, no. put your neck like this. I knew I forgot something. What'd you no forget? one's gonna know what show they're watching. No one's gonna know what show they're watching. That's why my back was all uncomfortable. I didn't have the extra padding. This is the centerpiece. The centerpiece. Um, we got this blanket for free too. It wasn't off the highway, but it was from oh, yeah. a television network. Thank you, television network. Um, got two of these things somewhere, don't we? Tomorrow we're going to pitch a TV show. Ooh, that's or tomorrow's we're going to have day. a meeting with the television network, and potentially we could have another show on our hands. Maybe we can buy some more sandwiches for the rest of the year. Yeah, so some more oatmeal. Perhaps it'll be an exciting update. In the next episode of My Own Brothers. Yeah. We'll tell you uh, as much as we can without saying too much because networks are really annoying about talking about things before they happen. And then they never happen and you can't talk about them and feel cool about yourself and be proud of what you're doing because no one knows. I have some important updates to share. What did you find on the side of the road today? No. <laughs> no. Instantly he I'm remembered. I'm trying to think. I did feel like I found something. Did you dogged today. Today was a bad day. In one instance, there was a dime on the ground. <laughs> I, already, I already tell. And I can I hear your woes. The gas station. And you couldn't get it. I went, so I'm running late. Today was a bad day when Trevor can't pick up a I dime. Ju- the dog walks went late, and I'm rushing to an appointment, and then I have no gas in my car. All day it's been below E, and the light's been on. I'm like, okay, I, I'm pushing it. I'm I pushing run out of gas all the time. I don't know how you don't run out of gas when your light is Because I know my time pretty on. well. But this time I was like, I'm pushing it, I'm pushing it. So I go to this gas station, right? And I've, I have literally need to get in there, get gas and go. And I put in the thing, it does the thing. It was like, see cashier, you know, sometimes you put your car. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, so I ran in and then I was about to kind of like go in front of this lady, but I was kind of being polite and I shouldn't have been. And I just kind of let her walk in front of me. She took about four minutes to buy her wire and some other drink. And then finally I got up there. I said, I need to put money on this pump. And they're like, oh, the machine's messed up. He's like, you can put it on pump two and then wait for that other person to get off the pump and then we'll put you I was like, no, I have to go. I, I really didn't have time. So then I left the gas station. Because you and, had to get but, to the dog in time? Right when I was waiting in line, I saw the dime on the ground. And I was like, oh, God, a dime. And <laughs> I started talking about all what I just told you. And I had rushed out and I forgot the dime. Oh, you must have been kicking yourself. I couldn't right reach out and get it because there was a woman in front of me. I didn't want to reach down near her. Yeah, I hate like, reaching around them for the dime. I just hope every time I see money on the ground at the register and I'm behind someone, I'm thinking, don't look, don't pick it up, don't pick it up. And they never do. And then nope. on top of this, Paul would be saying, because nobody wants to pick a it up. Dime is a hard thing to ignore. It's hard to not pick and up silver. I've been having this in, inquenchable thirst. I can't satisfy. I don't understand what it is. For uh, edible thing? No, like a thirst for liquid. I, I drink oh. like, I bought coconut water. And I, was like, I thought okay, you were speaking that. hypothetically. And then I bought, and I was drinking like my water all day. And then or whatever I, the word and is. And then I got another bottle of water. And then I came home and like, I ate some watermelon and like nothing is like. So you've been dehydrated? I don't think I'm dehydrated, but I had this unquenchable thirst. You're thirsting. And I still haven't figured it out. Isn't that I'm like a catchphrase for 90s juice? You're thirsting for something? 
Yeah, remember, yeah. remember the stupid cheese thing? Thirsting for adventures. You, you hunker for a hinka. You hink, no, you hinker for a hunka. A Hankering for a hunk of chunk of cheese. Because of hankering, you know? He says, <coughs> hankering for a hunk of cheese. Hankering for a hunk of Han- a chunk of oh, cheese. Oh, you're hankering for a hunk of. Hinka for a hunk of. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember yeah, how it goes. It's not that. Um, <laughs> That's you right now. Fuck. You're hunkering for a hunk of cheese. There's a major crisis on our hands. <laughs> I have a major crisis on What? There was also a nickel on the ground earlier? A major crisis is on my hands. And I have to explain it because... I can't let the same thing happen twice. When the second biggest tragedy of free money not going to air, uh. the second biggest tragedy, first being it not going to air, mm-hmm. second being in production of that show, I lost my spoon. <laughs> Do you remember? My spoon. My spoon. My Something favorite spoon. Something that to 99% of the population is absolutely worthless. My favorite spoon. There's I billions of spoons, Jeff. No, but that's just not like this one. This spoon was like perfect size for what I like. It wasn't like a little size, but it wasn't a big size. And you can't get that, that same stuff. spoon again? It's not that I can't. No, I can't get that same spoon because it was from the 70s. And well, maybe it had like it. the plastic coating on the handle. Oh yeah! Oh, I remember that spoon. And they had a hole at the those end. Those are to hang yeah, out. those are good. Okay, like I, I understand. Spoon. That was a cool spoon. And I didn't like how long it was though. I like them being a little bit rounder than yeah, yours. Handle was a little it was a little oh, bit point. No, it was kind of pointy. Really. That was a cool, that's a that feels good in your hand. I had that, that spoon forever. I, bought I that bet spoon. you you could find a plastic coat. It wasn't plastic. It was. It was, it was, it was like rubbery, like rubbery plastic. Stuff, whatever. And I always thought bacteria was getting underneath the end of it near the spoon. You end. could probably inch that off. I washed it, but whatever. So I no, can't do anything to it now because it's gone. What so, happened during the show? You lost. But it? I bought that spoon at that that like Christian Light thrift store or something on. Uh, uh, stink Lincoln. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember we went in there mm-hmm. with Jared one time. It's just a bunch of random stuff. That long ago you bought. I bought it when we first moved here. Fifteen years ago. I had that. Fourteen years ago. I had that all this time, and I took wow. that spoon with my breakfast with our producer of Free Money, and he picked me up. Uh-huh. And I was eating my breakfast, and I put it down in the back. It was also my favorite bowl. Not the filming day. It was my Pre- glass pre- bowl that had the. Was it like a location scouting day? It was location scouting. We went. We all met downtown. Yeah, yeah. It was that day, and I left it in the back seat of his car. Oh, and then he and I drove back, and I forgot to get out of the car. I said, "Did you ask him?" I asked him his name is Carl. I said, "Carl, would you grab my spoon in my uh, bowl? I, I I forgot it." And I asked him like a day later, and then he's like, "Oh yeah, sure. My my wife has the car, and she she had the car, and she came." He's got to have finally. Him. Finally, I asked him again like a week later. I'm like, "Hey, did you ever get it?" Like, fully expected for him to say, "Oh yeah, I got it. Come get it whenever you want." And he's like, oh, you know, she never found it. I wasn't able to find it either. So she had returned a bunch of, like, props or something, I think. She probably thought it was. And I think she mistook my bowl and spoon for a prop, and she gave it to Not whoever she was. a dog bowl, right? No, it was a glass bowl. Oh, that was a good bowl. You have a new glass bowl. With and that, I right? lost that spoon. So That's a tragedy. My last step, which I kept forgetting to do, was to ask him where she went <laughs> to then look through the shelves of stuff, and I'll. You should go to the. You should go to a prop house. A year and a half ago. Prop house and just say, "This is my spoon. You can't rent this to anyone." They probably threw it away. They like, probably have a picture of it. Spoon. But the major crisis at hand is now my knife is missing. My butter knife. <laughs> and remember your fork broke. It only, Seth's fork only had two prongs on Classic it. Plastic one. Yeah, I still have that though. But but it, that's still it's my. It's as good as gone because it's no. Broken. I still have. I would be really upset if I lost that too. But my my. I only have one. I have a spoon. I have, I have a fork and I have a knife. It's and like the, the old phrase we used to say, one fork, one spoon, one bowl, one man. It's all you need. Or one woman. Or one woman, one, woman, one fork, one bowl, one spoon, one man. Life is good. It's all you need. Now, Chef, it is one bowl. So now bowl, my spoon is missing. You're one bowl, you're one fork, one woman. And now I'm down to just a spoon. I'm just a spoon man. You, you, one, one, That's all I can do is no. spread my butter or spread my mustard with the but spoon. But it's not even the good spoon. No, I... Helen gave me a nice spoon that I use all the time. I won't chip my teeth. Oh, it's woods from it, Japan. Ooh, that's cool. Is it better than your old spoon? You gotta get rubber on it's that. It's better in the way that it won't chip my teeth. But ironically, yeah, what about this? Helen gave me the spoon and won't chip my teeth. What but about she's the... the woman who chipped my tooth. <laughs> <laughs> she's preventing any more chippings. And so, yeah, she must feel what about the fork? regretful about well, it. Dad made you a wooden fork. I know. And Our dad prongs, carved him a wooden fork. One of the prongs fork. broke off. 
Uh, I use that for certain dishes. When I do that vegan tiki masala thing in the yeah. oven, I use that for that. But then the rice gets stuck between the prongs, so it's really hard to get them out. Uh, so anyway, my knife is missing. It's a crisis at hand. I have to find. It's that a crisis knife. out of hand. Every time I go into the cabinet in your hand. and I try to spread mustard, I don't have the knife. It, and you okay, have okay, these okay. awful crappy knives. My knife is great. And the shape is like this. It's like no, no, so no, no, dumb. No, no. It's not. No, no, my knife is perfectly they shaped. They are average, it's got a perfect classic handle. knives. I'll and show yours, them. They're I want to show them the knives after the break. After the break, you can bring it back. I'm not show you these knives. I'll show you all the knives we have. You have lots of knives. They're perfectly good knives. And they have no. What was your knife shaped of spread? like? What was your knife shaped like? A, a mallet. It's a nice smooth curve. A cricket mallet. Your curve is too sharp. It comes up like this. What does that have to do with spreading? You because can spread then you, with your then you don't have any surface here because it, because it's like you're spreading with just the edge. My no, no, whole no. thing is just a whole. You're acting thing. like it's a toothpick. It's kind of like spreading hard to with spread. a toothpick. It's not. It's a fat knife. And it's really long and heavy. And my knife's a little bit shorter. Oh, oh, you're hurting your back spreading butter with this knife. Anyway, you're mental. The knives are perfect. We'll bring Nathan's knife in for a specimen. To I wish we had your knife to show the comparison well, and see there's no difference. But first, we're gonna cut to the Frankie cam. See what Frankie's up to. What are you doing, Frank? Right about now. Cut to the Frankie camera. Hey, Frankie. Frankie, today's your lucky day. We have a very special announcement. We went through a lot of trouble to get a Frankie camera put in place for you. The audience loved you so much on my own brothers that we... Frank? Frank? He's talking to you, Frankie. Hey, I'm trying to tell you, we flew a camera crew all the way to Pennsylvania to film you. To have you back on the show. Isn't that amazing? Oh. Do, you, do you have anything to say for yourself, Frankie, for this? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> well, well, Frankie, what about all your fans? They want to say hello to you. Oh, oh you like the sound interested. of your fans. Yeah. All right. What uh, do you have to say to them? Tell them something. Frank? Mm, not really much to say. Maybe he's telling us what we don't understand. Uh, maybe we can't understand. Frankie, can you hear us? Maybe the audience can understand his frequencies. He's staring us down, that's for sure. Welcome back. Wow, Frank's up to his old tricks. He's looking pretty good. Staring into Standing space. <laughs> He's, Doing his usual thing. He always just stares at you. He looks pretty healthy. And you think, how long is he going to stare at me? Yeah, his hair's growing out, looking like a fluffy a little, monster. A little movement there. He's moving around. Looks yeah. like a nice sunny day for him today. Yeah, he's enjoying his life in Philadelphia with his mother. Uh, all right, so back to the knife crisis. Here we go. Here are some yeah, totally look. normal, legitimate knives. No, look. Look at this. This is so... It's like this. Wow. You want it wider like this no, all but the look, way down? Yeah, yeah. Like a smooth consistency. This is dumb, too. If I had... Why is and this And this one's awful because this one has teeth. That's it's like a, a bread knife. That's for That's teeth. not a bread knife. Yes. This is like a steak knife or, or whatever. Something. It's for cutting. It's not this for... This is also bread. a steak what? knife. But you don't spread butter with this because then all the, it goes through all the teeth. No, and no, it no. Doesn't work. You can. You use and the this, opposite side. And then this. Look. Look at the surface area. It's just my finger. It's just right you, there. You don't need... I've had no problem. Look at these knives. This is a totally spy out of focus. It's out of focus. It's a yeah. totally normal knife. And here's the one that cuts. It's got some teeth on it. These knives. Yeah, but they're not butter knives. This is the, not butter knives. That one, yeah, but it's a crappy design. I chose and searched for years for the right design <laughs> and the right size and the right weight and the right length. And now I can't find it. I don't know what happened to it. I don't understand. You are specific about things just as bad as I am. What's that saying? Oh, no. I don't know. I just noticed it. I don't know how much you missed. Well, do you did? Yeah. I think it might. We may have had a technical difficulty, but I think we caught it just when it happened. I, I'm, I'm going to sure show I, you these knives just in I case. I think all that's there because I saw waveforms. You did? Yeah. Well, in case you didn't see, the audio probably can't hear me now, but. He's telling you that the knives are useless is what he's no, saying. No, he's not. He's telling you that the knives are totally normal, and you're super over specific about random things. I guess I am too in other ways, and you always yeah, yell at me for those. Yeah, but I just like a knife this, that functions. That's not that specific. Use a freaking and branch. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Anything works if it's gonna hold butter on it. My <clears throat> finger works better. So use your finger. Well, you got five knives. I on need one to hand. find the knife, and hopefully by the next episode. Any I'll knife when you got me around, I can chop through any substance. Yeah, but I'm not chopping. I need. I have a chopping knife. I can spread. I need too. a spreading knife. It's for a guy who has one fork, one bowl, one spoon, one man, you sure do need a lot of knives for different things. Uh, <laughs> I know. I need not one. I need one knife, you... one spoon, one man. That one knife has to be how you're not, you're not. If you your butter knives that you're talking so highly about can't cut through 
And if you think I'm bread. specific and neurotic, Nathan will not put a hand towel in his bathroom. That doesn't matter. Because it's he, not relevant. Yes, it is. Because George and Shepard were yelling at me the other day about this for like an hour. I just want him to put a hand towel in his I bathroom. I like to dry Whether my hands. Whether or not he uses it. I like to dry my hands in the closet. From my bathroom, I can take one swift step, one quick, easy step into my closet of my bedroom and I dry my hands off there. So I hang up my towel because it hangs big and wide and it gets lots of air to it and it dries off. I don't like hanging the towel in the back of the door because it's really awkward to like, the sink's behind, in, the sink's in front of me. And my point The door's was, behind me. I gotta go uh, uh, and move the door and it bangs into my ankles and then grab it off the back of the hook and the, the towel rack on it the wall. It doesn't have to be, yeah. I can't put a towel rack on the wall because it's been falling off the wall and I haven't had fixed it and I just yeah. been like that since we but moved then, in. But then regardless of the towel rack it's being easy broken, to step right why can't into the you closet? put one in on the counter Because I never have guests in my bathroom to need to warrant I go in there a sometimes. towel. Even the fact that I go in there sometimes should be the time I've never that it sits there that. for. I've never, no, you don't because you don't go in my bathroom. You always complain I about do. my I bathroom. I do, I go in your bathroom a lot. You because complain the, about your bathroom. What do you mean I complain about my bathroom? You complain about my bathroom all the time, and you say, your bathroom's dirty. You do, I, that's why you use yours. So I think Trevor Denver comes in here, I don't need a towel for him. Yeah, but I do. I tell you all the time, like, just put a towel in that bathroom for the off time that I come in or someone comes over to the house to you use your bathroom. Unnecessary. Once in a while. No one knows. But my point is yes, that it can't and, be easier. And, it can't be easier to turn to the towel and wipe your hands off than it can't be to take two steps into the closet. I enjoy. In the other room. I actually enjoy drying my hands in that closet i feel at peace i feel calm it's quiet in there it's dark in there i like being that in that bath in that closet and i put my head bet- the towel hangs like this over a rod you know over yeah. in the closet and i'll put my head in between i, I the know towel. i'm not denying that you get pleasure out of this sometimes it's a fun way to dry my but hands but i'm not denying you get pleasure out of this i am but, just saying you should put a towel in there i do for everybody else whenever I, we have the rest and party, i guarantee that you hate. would use it because Undeniably, it would be more convenient. One fork, you one spoon, one bowl, one man, one towel. Yeah, and put that towel in the bathroom. I use one towel. One drying. One towel, one towel, towel station as well. I love a lot of towels in the kitchen, one in the bathroom. One towel station. I. Oh, yeah, and every time you go into the kitchen, <laughs> you take the towel off case. the rack in the kitchen and you put it on the counter all over the house and you never put that back on God, the have a lot. You need to have a lot of kitchen this towels. This is an around. anti-towel rack in gentlemen apparently I like just putting them where they where they go I'm an organic life life form I just live and things happen around me yeah you're an organic when, mess whenever we have people over for wrestling parties and stuff like that I always put towels in the bathroom because I know people are going to go in there oh, and so use why it. don't you just keep one there then because I never off I don't have that many towels clean I'm always always down to my last mm-hmm. towel and then when I do sometimes when I have multiple towels I will hang one on the back of the door mm-hmm. In the bathroom and to keep one in the closet. So it's not like it never happens. It's just most of the time when there's no humans in the house besides us, I don't do it. And then George came over. But my argument was time. that you are denying that it is easier to reach over to the center of the sink to dry your hands than it is to step into. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's, it's not less, I'm not saying it's no more enjoyable. I'm not saying it's not it's Yeah, not, you did. No, it's more I prefer it. I like to go into the closet to dry my hands, so I don't bother putting one where it's easier. Well, I think that's good for you. I don't you mind keep using the towel being in the easy. closet. Look at me. Do but I look like a guy had an easy life? No. I, I think you should keep using the towel in the closet, but then also put one in the bathroom. You can put one in there if you want one. I only it have one the, towel for my hands. It's in my I bathroom. I only have one towel, too. <laughs> <laughs> we need more towels. You should find some more towels in Cyro City. We can I'm use keep your, an eye up. We can use your highway blankets for towels. I keep an eye up. No, blankets aren't going to yeah, blankets don't work. You can um, use this. Just come in here and dry your hands on this. I don't want to come in here. That's farther than your closet. But get some. We gotta get some denim towels. That would look cool. Look like bad boys. Denim. <laughs> it wouldn't work at all. Just the least absorbent. I know. But it would look real cool. It's like all these bad boys with their denim towels. I'm a denim towel kind of boy. Yeah, I was walking around the other day and I was thinking. I I drove by this guy in this car and he looked like a guy I once. I had a problem with that. Tell you about that story. A guy I once had a problem. Remember with? that guy who used to always come to the pen with? Yeah, he was coming no. to pen with you on his phone. Oh, you hated. Serve- you said I won't serve you until you hang out the phone. Yeah, that kind guy. of. But did I tell you the whole story about when I saw him? No. Shepard used to make coffee and snacks for these people at a French. Bakery. I thought I saw him, and I was like, and recently, it, and there was a guy with a whatever the new Apple earphones are called, and he had in his ear. I'm like. I wouldn't be surprised if that was him because it looked like him. He had those like John Lennon type of like oh, sunglasses yeah, on. Yeah. He like he, he wasn't as funky looking as the original guy, but that just made me think of him. Maybe I'll tell that story. The 
guy used to always come into my work, and he'd always be on the phone. What's the time? How long do we have? We got four minutes. Four minutes, everybody. Do you have a commercial break coming up in this episode? Well, we're going to have to check back in on Frankie. Oh, yeah. Uh, so this guy is uh, always comes in every single time, always gets a blueberry muffin every single time, and he is always on the phone every single time. Quick fact, you can see Seth working at this spot at his counter in the very first episode of Talking Classics. Really? Talking Classics Neo Geo. I was in there as Keith with the Virtual Boy on, and you were the guy behind the counter serving me snacks, oh, and I'm knocking stuff off the shelf. Did we shoot that at night we or shot just it, in the afternoon? We, I think we shot it. Um, it felt like it was afternoon. Cause Maybe I, that I, guy it, let me do it when it was closing. I think it was afternoon because there's a crosswalk shot of me crossing down at the promenade that I shot right before I came into your place. I'm crossing the That's so weird. I'm crossing the crosswalk at the promenade. In the same montage, it was Keith out doing stuff with the virtual boy on. And one of the shots is you working at the. You know what's funny is like right there, all that glass. And we, I used to go see you at night every Sunday. Yeah, Remember, I go and stuff to give me all these snacks when he's closing up. It was just us. But yeah, you, that you filmed it during the day when there was customers there. Because it's funny because that shelf right there where you had probably knocked stuff off always fell off customers would touch it and it would break oh, that really? glass was like super breakable and I always the did, glass always and it was very it was very like uh, finicky you know that the thing could That's fall it was held it was a glass it was held together with those like metal that, yeah. clasps yeah it was, there was nothing holding it down though it was just resting yeah, and I'm thinking yeah. like I wonder if like I was worried about that break for I knocked some signs and we put stuff there for me to knock over well but yeah continue so this to begin guy the came story, in a blueberry this guy always comes muffin. in every freaking week and order a blueberry muffin and he's always on his phone every single time the first few times I was like whatever 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 and then like he's, it's just so rude he, and he'd be like blueberry muffin blueberry muffin and, and I'd be like and he kind of knew I knew what he ordered so he did the, he started saying less and less syllables every time he'd come in <laughs> and always, sounds like a Seinfeld episode and he was a loser and then he like went over to like the, think, the nerd thing you know the like bluetooth the, the bluetooth the 90s looking thing or whatever yeah. and, he, and the guy was never talking about anything. He was, he was definitely talking to friends. I could tell it was like not a business conversation. It was like a friend conversation. And so, and so like, I used to start to ignore him. I just wouldn't serve him. And I just pretend I didn't see him. And, I, and then one time I was just like, I'm just going to let him know that I see him. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to serve him. And then, and then he, he's like, he's like giving me attitude. I'm like, oh, you can't, I can't take your order if you're on the phone. I just can't. A policy. lot of places won't do that. And I started, to, I made it up. It wasn't true. Well, uh, I've heard that from places say, it, you well, they won't help you with the register and if you're on the phone. He like begrudgingly like he's like blueberry muffin and then he ordered it. And I get to him thank you and then he goes back back on the phone and then so this goes on and on for like months and months and it drives me nuts. And do you always not serve him until he hangs up? Yeah, and then no, I began to get to that point where and then I just kind of like just kind of gave up and I just started to do it. or other people serve him I'd step away and I was just so mad at him for always doing this thing but uh, the producers tell us it would cut to the Frankie camera oh. and, is that uh, the end of that story? no I have a, the oh, big let's finish let's check in on Frankie let's check in on Frankie and we'll give you the big finish to that story after this break no oh, he's gone Frank? oh there he is oh there you are hey Frank so what is that special message you want to say to all your fans Come on, Frankie. We spent all this money and time to get some get you on camera. You gotta tell us something, Frank. Everyone's waiting. I told you guys. I'm retired. Leave me alone. Oh, sorry, Frank. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that fascinating footage. The Frankie break. Looks like he made a little progress. He moved, moved to another area. He moved to the back of the room. He likes to see the world. Just dogging around. He's the world traveler. Tra traveling man. Um, well, it's good to know Frankie's still a Still kicking. Still kicking up there. Pennsylvania didn't kick him out. And. So let's conclude this. Oh, yeah. So the end of Dramatic my story. story. So this guy is driving me nuts. I can't stand him. And it's just, I just want to get back at him for making me always serve him on the phone because he's so rude. Some people come on the phone, they go, hold on a minute. And they put the phone down, mm. they order. And that's like fine, like whatever. But like this guy, just no consideration. So then one day. And you're giving him, you're giving him a service, and he's just ignoring you. It's pretty rude. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like I'm, just, I'm giving you a service. Like I'm not your, you know, you, you don't own me. Like I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm a human. And so then, uh, one day I was out in the park, like the water garden there, yeah. across from the bike shop and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I was, I was coming back with my bike from the bank or something, and I look up and I see a guy on the phone, 
It's like, who is he talking to all the time? <laughs> I like, hate it. Always, and I was like, I bet you someone who's watching is like, guy. oh, that's my friend Kevin. <laughs> probably, probably. Tell your friend Kevin. He's Tell your friend Kevin to hang up once in a while. And then I see him like, oh my god, it's the freaking. Guy. I was like, hey, excuse me, excuse me. Oh and I stopped my him. My god, this is such a Larry mm-hmm. David thing. I can't believe you I, did this. And I thought to myself, I have to say something to this I guy because this. this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> And then he was on the phone. I go, oh, excuse me. Paul excuse would have done me. the same thing. I'm like, hey, I want to talk to you for a minute. And oh, then, my. And he's like, uh, he's like, oh, hang on. And he put his phone down. I was like, I got to say, man. Oh, I'm my like, God. I work at Le Panko. Yeah. And every single time you come in, oh, you're on the God. phone. And it's super rude. And you should hang up the phone when you order food. He goes, Funny how he had to put, had then, pause on the phone and, while you tell him. And then he goes, like this. he goes, I'll call you right back. He hung up on his friend. He goes, he goes, let me tell you, I'm a really busy guy. And I'm always on the phone. And I'm, I'm working. I'm always working. And I have to get things done. I'm like, well, most of the time when you come in, it sounds like you're talking to a friend, just kind of like you do it right now. He's like, <laughs> he's like, no, he's like, I'm working. I work on the phone. That's my job. He's like, I got to be on the phone. I'm like, yeah. But when you come in, you could put your person on hold like for you just did 30 right now. seconds. To you just order, did it order, right now to yell and, at you. And give the consideration to the person in front of you in real life. He's like, well, I don't. That's just how I am, and he's like, he's like, good luck to you or something. He said, I can't remember what it was, but he was so. But I was so happy that I finally got to tell him. I said, it's super rude. I bet like, he gets it. And I said people. something, and I said, you shouldn't come in anymore if you're going to be on the phone. Oh, oh damn! Because I had to say something to him to make myself feel like okay, I made oh, him wow. understand now. But anyway, wow. I mean, most people satisfying. feel that way. It's very annoying. I was and he this. probably hears it from other people. Yeah, and it's probably Kevin, his friend, who he's talking to, is probably like I felt like the probably que- talking to him right now. I- I'm watching a show where they're talking about you. <laughs> I felt like the queen of confrontation, like in Seinfeld, when Elaine like oh yeah, fights yeah. the guy who doesn't say hi to her anymore yeah, or something yeah. in the lobby. That was a good episode. That show is so good. So many real life things that you live all the time and you don't think about. Most of them seem to be real life things. It's a show about nothing. That's also about everything. Um, well, um, you know, I had also wanted to talk about. All of our jobs in this. We should talk about that next episode. This has been a jam-packed episode. We should check in on Frankie again. See what he's up to now. <laughs> we can check in when we, when we, when we on the end credits. Yeah, we'll end on seeing what Frankie's doing. Um, what's something I interesting could, happening to you this week? I, the job thing will take me forever. I got hit by a car today, this week. That's right. Oh, that's right. Not my body, Not but my body. car. I'll tell you what, I got a freaking, I don't know if this is a Chefford thing or if it's a not a Chefford thing. Or not a Chefford thing. Because I had some pretty bad luck turn into really good luck. So Chef is usually bad luck turned into like half less bad luck. <laughs> what? Because like your car will get hit, but then it turned out. Yeah, like, I got 700 bucks when my car got hit. But then, yeah, you got like a small uh, amount of money or you. Small? The person who hit you will then hire you for a job where they'll give you 200 bucks. You know, it leads yeah. to something later, but it's like kind of okay. I got. Well, it's like that time we were squatting in that house of uh, Abby or Allie's and then I got the job at TV oh, Guide because that, that lady who lived downstairs. Yeah, our friend, we were homeless when we first moved to California. We were sleeping on our friend's living room floor and her friend came over. It was her abandoned apartment. She had moved out of the apartment. Oh, she moved out while we were staying there. That's right. The only thing staying? in the apartment was an unsheeted mattress. We st- we stayed with her when she moved. So she was paying rent in both places. So we got to stay in the empty place later. Yeah, because she moved out of her apartment before the lease was up. So she yeah, had she moved literally weeks. across the street like you could walk to it. That, but right. yeah, we stayed there. And then there was a woman who lived the downstairs. The first apartment was not much nicer. And then um, I yeah. got her phone number somehow. And then she gave um, you a job at TV Guide Channel. And then she called Channel. me and asked me if I wanted to work a day of extra work. I mean, uh, p- TV Guide. PA work. And then I did... And then that fart stinks. And then the next that That's same still going. Yeah, it's just small. And then that same day, she asked me if I want to come in the next day to do uh, dubbing or something they call or uh, uh, logging. Uh, the logging, you type in the captions. And then I worked there for a year. Yeah, you paid my rent for a while too. And I also made fifty hours a week every week. That was when the and I worked backwards about thirty hours. A week. I didn't have a job for a few months, and Chef had paid my rent. In the thirty hours that I worked, I worked about. Five hours. Yeah, he did nothing. That's when you played Halo. Remember? On oh, their yeah. computers. I used to play Halo. That's used right. to play Halo at TV Guide shopping Channel. With Monique. And also, yeah, the producer that you worked for would buy exercise clothes from American Apparel. First time I ever heard of American Apparel was That's when what you no, I there. bought them for being with Daisy Fuentes. Yeah, but because they needed you to be an extra yeah. in the background of a Daisy Fuentes workout show. Which maybe we'll so show some footage of that Sunday. We should show him that. So that's an extra on a TV Guide show where he's doing yoga in the background. Plotting. and you got free, Yeah, you got free clothes out of it. Yeah, American, and they were like $80. That's when I first, I was like, what's American 
apparel, and then I fell in love with it because they had really cool stuff. I remember going there. I'm like, I bought a pair of sweatpants, but they're not ugly sweatpants like normal. I'm like, they kind of fitted. Yeah, those were really cool. Me and Jared were like, whoa, what are these cool clothes? I never heard of it. Anyways, uh, that was a good old thing. Well, I guess that's more of a jobs thing, but you were saying about... Well, yeah, I can talk about jobs. Uh, I have, I could talk for days about the jobs. But no, you were just I've talking had, like, about something jobs. else. I was going to tell them how I got hit. My car oh, got hit by car. a car. Yeah. And I was driving out of Photo Chem, the place that's color correcting Milford, our newest film, a short mm. film. And uh, I pulled out, turned left, started driving straight. A second after I was driving straight down the lane, some guy was parked on the side of the road, like two lanes over from me did this really big U-turn to cross over like all four lanes, yeah. like five lanes technically, because it's like a middle lane for like loading and stuff. So he pulls right across and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I'm turning, turning and I didn't, I couldn't, swear. I was swerving into the other oncoming street. There was no one coming luckily and I still couldn't avoid him. He nailed me and his front of his car dragged down the whole side of my car. Dented the Because he was like side. halfway through his turn. He was halfway through his turn and I was holding the horn down. He was just like, whoa, because I was in his blind spot, I guess. But he shouldn't have been doing a U-turn over all those lanes. Anyways, he was driving an Uber, and the girl got out of a car. She was like, I'm going to get another one. (laughs) And I was like, oh, I hope they don't get into this discrepancy like you did with your insurance place where they Uh, didn't give you all the money they should have. But it turns out I'm getting 3500 bucks. So that's pretty good. I'm not going to fix a car. That's for sure. Oh, my God. I'll fix it myself. It's a pretty big dent. You can't fix that dent. I, I went to the car wash. Not the car wash. I went to the gas station yesterday, and I used the windshield wiper cleaner to try to clean the smudges from his paint off my car. It didn't really You're do an it. You're idiot. But I can see that how That water it, is filthy. I, I know. And I was like, it's the worst way to clean anything. I'm going to try to wash it really good, see if I can get... If you use a razor, I think I can get his paint off. You're going to scrape your paint off, too. I think I can do it. With a Brillo or something. I'm going to try to clean I think as you much should as fix I that car. I don't want to fix it. Because eventually when you sell it. I it's... need that money really bad. Oh my I can't. I spent so much on Milford and I'm doing, I'm giving Photo Chem all this money to color correct it. And I'm going to have to pay money for the audio mix. It just well... keeps going up. This short film now, Milford, has cost almost $40,000 when it originally was supposed to cost thirty because that's what we raised. And I've put almost $10,000 of my own money in. So I need to take money anywhere I can get because I am broke. Speaking of, you should donate to Chef's Patreon if you like this show. Speaking of broke. Speaking of being broke, Chef is picking up pennies off the side of the highway. If you like Not this show, broke when you have true love in your life. Chef is emotionally rich, financially poor. So please, please, please support the Patreon. Chef has worked really hard. He's got a feature film com- film coming Perhaps out that my you can watch true for free. True love is going to watch this episode. She sure will. She watches everything you do. So, give away please, please love. donate to Seth's Patreon. I also have one, too, but I prefer you donate to Seth's because this is his show, and I like doing it. And if you like watching oh, it, and it really help. This episode, I'd like to thank the two new Patreon subscribers. The timer's still going? Yeah, we got a very short amount of time. Oh, no, we got two minutes. Uh... Who? I don't want to say their names, but you know who you are. Oh, someone who helped Jeff it out very much recently. Well, that's third... Two new donators. Thank you very much for donating. Um, they probably don't mind their names being said. I think Derek was one, and then Leanne was the other. Thank you, Derek and Leanne. Um, and then also, the next radio show is going to have a proper dedication, but Pizza Norwegian needs an enormous thank you because <laughs> he sent me a chunk of money to pay for my broken car. And I really... This, this episode is, is pseudo-dedicated to Pete Norwegian, but properly... Thank you, the Pete next, the uh, Norwegian. You're a savior on Earth. The next... He uh, has saved me from... Mysteries will be dedicated fully to Pete Norwegian. We'll have a, oh, wow. a banner for you and even... On the radio show? Yeah. Oh, that's show. cool. Yeah, he's a very, very, very generous person. I think everyone who watches our stuff knows all about him. And if it wasn't for him, normally I don't probably like to talk wouldn't about be in the south if it stuff, wasn't for him with other people. Pizza Norwegian, I really feel like I owe a great thank you to Pizza Norwegian. So thanks. Thanks to everyone who supports and watches. Even though yeah. this is a very low viewed show. So thank you to everyone who watches it and supports um, it. Um well I guess we'll cut to some Frankie footage on the way out. Yeah. Give you guys another taste of all Frankie. Next time we'll talk about some of our jobs and I've had over fifty, so Hopefully, Frankie's still around. Yeah. He, he may have left. <laughs> He's up to something. We'll find out what. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.